Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an infinite radical equation. We've done similar equations before, but uh, with this video, I'm just going to show you a couple different scenarios. We're going to be looking at some interesting equations. Anyways, we have the square root of x plus the square root of x plus the square root of x dot 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 uh, just equals x. This goes on forever. We have infinitely many x's in there. And we're going to find out for which x value or values, obviously, there could be more than one, but we have to just find out. Uh, this equation is going to be true. So I'm going to show you a couple of things before we proceed with the solution. And I'll be presenting uh, two methods, at least. At this point, I'm thinking, no, nah, maybe, maybe three. I don't know. We'll see. So what happens if we only have like two x's and two radicals? Then this equation, even though it looks pretty simple, when you work it out, you're going to end up with a quartic equation like this one. And if you solve this quartic equation, obviously, you get a really interesting solution with lots of cube roots and so on and so forth. Right? That's kind of like an interesting answer. Approximately, it is 1.7549. And you can pretty much see the graph of the quartic. It has two x-intercepts, one of which is x equals 0, and uh, the other one is just the solution that we're looking for. Obviously, x equals 0 is going to be a valid solution because square root of 0 is just equal to 0. So great, so there are two solutions to this equation then, right? Great, uh, well, not all equations are this nice, but, uh, you know, this one is kind of fine. And notice that in our quartic equation, we're able to factor out x. That's what actually makes it kind of like a cubic uh, because x uh, is a factor. You can easily divide both sides by x and get a cubic equation. And apparently that cubic equation only has one real solution. The other two solutions are complex non-real solutions. Therefore, we only see uh, two y-intercepts and one of them is zero. So the other one belongs to the cubic. Make sense? Hopefully it does. And there you go. You see the solution. All right. Now, let's take a look at one more radical. And obviously, things aren't going to be that simple anymore because you can end up with an octic, which is eighth degree. And by the way, we've done a video on an octic before. That was a very interesting octic, though, very special. Because octics can't be solved. You can't even solve like a, what is it, septic or heptic? Anyways, the seventh degree, something like that. But the thing is, remember, in this equation, we were able to factor out x. And in this one, we are able to factor out x squared. So that actually becomes, uh, that doesn't become an octic. Uh, that becomes something like a, a, what's it called? Hexic or sextic. All right, great. So that solution is going to be 1.9-ish. Now notice that the, the values of x are getting larger as we go. Uh, when we have more radicals, what happens if we have infinitely many of these? Let's go ahead and find out. And let me start with the first method. All right, so our equation again is x square root of x plus square root of x dot 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 equals x. Okay, now when you have a number on the right hand side, obviously things are a little easier, but even with this, it's still easy. But first method is just going to be a little bit more painful. Bear with me. Okay, so ignore the right hand side and just focus on the left hand side. Don't we have a shortcut for this? Like this is equal to something radical something. Well, if you forget about that, there's a formula, which is this. Let me tell you what it is first, and then I'll kind of show you how that's obtained. It is 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 4x divided by 2. But how did we get that? Well, you can just go ahead and set this equal to y, right? So you can kind of go like this. Again, you're ignoring the right-hand side, so you don't even know that is equal to x, right? And then you can square both sides. And then you get something like this. And this is an interesting expression because it contains itself infinitely many times. And this is the same thing as y, don't you think? They're the same. So we get something like x plus y equals y squared. And from here, we get a quadratic y squared minus y minus x equals 0. This quadratic has two solutions. And I can go ahead and write them negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus plus 4x and that all over 2c. But notice that this one is no good because 1 plus 4x, when you square root 1 plus 4x, you get an expression that is greater than 1, right? If x is positive. Obviously, you don't, you don't want x to be negative in this case. Uh, so, or I should say x is, um, what is it called? Um, 
yeah, x, when x is greater than negative one fourth, I should probably say that. But anyways, you get the idea. So this, this quantity is going to be bigger and you're going to end up with a negative quantity. So you don't want that. So this is what we are looking for. Let's go ahead and set the left hand side equal to that since we already know that. But right hand side is already x. So we get the following. 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4x divided by 2. I know this may sound like overkill, but again, the idea is to introduce the strategy here. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this equation. This is radical. Uh, let's multiply by 2. And then, you know, with most radicals, you want to isolate the radical thingy because uh, you don't want to introduce more radicals into the equation. And now we can go ahead and get rid of this. And that gives us on the right hand side 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Yay, 1 cancels out. Awesome, beautiful. We can go ahead and cross it out. And we end up with a nice equation. Bring the 4x over and we get 4x squared minus 8x is equal to 0. Awesome. And now I can go ahead and take out 4x here and I get x minus 2 equals 0. And obviously this equation has two solutions x equals 0 is going to work. It worked in the finite case. It's also going to work in the infinite case because it just works. It's cool. And x equals 2 is another solution. Now, I want to go back to the uh, finite cases because I want to show you that. Notice that as I increase the number of radicals, I got closer to 2. It's actually kind of like a limit case. If you can write it as an you know infinite sum or series or whatever, and you're going to notice that you're getting closer to uh, 2 as you increase the number of radicals. Anyways, so there are two solutions. They're both valid. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Obviously, my second method, you're going to allow my second method, and you're probably going to hate my first method. But some people also like the first method because it's kind of like more mathematical. Well, not necessarily, but it's kind of like less elegant, but uh, kind of more brute force. I don't know. Sometimes it's more uh, educational. Anyways, so here's the thing. I want to square both sides, but I don't want to get into the, you know, the nitty gritty, the radical stuff. I just want to square both sides. Keep it simple. All right. So when I do, I get this nice expression, but right hand side becomes x squared, of course. And then I noticed like the realization comes and I'm like, uh oh, this is the same thing as x, right? Isn't that cool? It's beautiful. That's why math is so beautiful. X plus x, like gigantic things can just collapse. That's why. I, Law math. Uh, one reason, I guess. x squared equals 2x. Yay! This can be solved very easily because I can just factor. Don't cross out the x's because you're going to lose solutions and you don't want that to happen, right? Obviously, uh, in some cases, we introduce extraneous solutions. That's not a big deal because you can always clean them up by checking the domain or just by plugging in. But if you lose roots, you'll never know that you did because you already got rid of them. So that's very important not to cancel things. Uh, well, let me give you a ridiculous example. 2x equals 3x, right? I mean, this equation obviously has a solution, but if you cross out the x's, you end up with 2 equals 3. So a lot of people like go through so many loops to prove that 1 equals 2 or 2 equals 3. You don't really need that. Look, check, Take a look at this equation. x equals 0 implies this, and then cross out the x's, you get 2 equals 3. That's it. Simple. Anyways, from here, I talk too much, I know that, even with a bad voice. x equals 0 or x equals 2 is going to give us all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.